All right, in this video, we're going to start section 4.3 and talk about polynomials, where a polynomial is a collection of terms separated by plus or minus signs. And those terms are kind of the different parts of your expression. So anytime I have something that's separated by a plus or minus sign, it's called a term, and a whole bunch of terms are classified as polynomials. Now in a polynomial, terms will not be underneath a radical, they will not be in an absolute value, and your variables or your terms will not be in a denominator. Now you can have fractions as long as they're just numbers, uh, but no variables will be in your denominator. Also in a polynomial, your exponents on any of your variables will never be fractions or negative. So down here are a couple examples of polynomials. This is a polynomial. It has three terms. You see the three things being separated by plus or minus signs. And you notice that there's no radicals, there's no absolute values, uh, there's no denominators, and all of our exponents are positive and non-fraction. This middle one is also considered a polynomial. Even though it looks like there's a lot of stuff in there, there's still just one term. There's no plus or minus signs, so it's still just one big fat term, uh, again with positive exponents, uh, no radicals, anything like that. The third one is also a polynomial. This has two different terms. We still have exponents. Remember, our exponents are just invisible um, ones if they're not there, and so that's also considered a polynomial. So those are a few examples of different polynomials. Let's first talk about terms. So if I give you this polynomial, 3t to the 4th minus 5t to the 6th minus 4t plus 2, could you tell me how many terms are in this polynomial? Remember that terms are the pieces that are separated by plus or minus signs, so I see one, two, three, four different terms. This polynomial has four terms. So make sure you understand what a term is, and you can tell me how many terms are in a polynomial. Now there are different types of polynomials based on the number of terms they have and also based on their degree. Now degree means the highest exponent on your variables. So if I ask you what is the degree of your polynomial, I'm asking you for what is the highest exponent in this polynomial. I might also refer to what we call coefficients. Coefficients are just the numbers in front of each term. So if I give you 3x squared, the 3 would be my coefficient of that term. The degree would be 2 because it's the highest exponent on my variable. Okay. Now look with me at this chart. We are able to um, name polynomials based on two different things, based on the number of terms it has and based on their degree. And so depending on how many terms the polynomial has, we call it something special. If it has one term, we call it a monomial. If it has two terms, we call it a binomial. If it has three terms, we call it a trinomial. If it has four, five, six, anything really bigger than three, we call it a polynomial, many terms. Here's an example of a monomial. It has one term, 4x squared. Nine is really considered a monomial, it has one term. Now there's no variables there, right? It's just a constant, but it's still just one term. I have a negative 7, x to the 5th, y to the 12th, even though there's a whole bunch of stuff there, I have nothing that's separated by a plus or minus sign, so that's still just one term, that is a mon monomial. I have a couple examples here of binomials, two terms, two pieces that are separated by plus or minus signs. Trinomial, three pieces. And then polynomial is lots of different terms separated by plus or minus signs. So I can classify polynomials by their number of terms, but I can also classify them by whatever their degree is. Remember the highest exponent on your variable. If you have a degree of one, the highest exponent is one, we call it a linear polynomial. So here's an example of a linear polynomial, three X, because my degree is one. Or negative X plus four. There's different terms in there, but my highest degree is still one. So this is still a linear polynomial, a linear expression. If it has a degree of two, we call it a quadratic. So three X squared minus five, the highest degree is two. That's a quadratic um, expression. Here's another polynomial. This looks like it is a tr quadratic trinomial because it has three terms, but my highest degree is two. So it's quadratic and it's a trinomial because it has three terms. If the highest degree is a three, we call it a cubic. Those are some examples of a cubic polynomial. That's a cubic binomial and a cubic trinomial. So we can classify by two different things, number of terms and degrees. Really anything after a third degree, we call it fourth, fifth, sixth degree, nth degree, if we keep on going. Make sure that you can uh, label 
and name the different types of polynomials. Here are also some examples of things that are not polynomials. You can see that in these three, we have some variables and denominators, so we do not consider those uh, polynomials anymore. Remember, there shouldn't be any variables and denominators, no square roots um, on our variables, no absolute values, anything like that. All right, look at example number two with me. And if I give you these uh, different polynomials, would you be able to tell me the degree, how many terms there are, and can you name the polynomial with the two different things? See if you can pause the video. Can you come up with those three things for each of these polynomials and see if you got the same answer as me? All right, for the first one, I have the degree as the fourth degree because my highest ex, uh, exponent on my variable is four. How many terms are there in this polynomial? It looks like there's one, two, three terms. And so because it has a fourth degree and it has three terms, I'm gonna call this a fourth degree trinomial. Did you get it? All right, looking at B, what is the degree of this polynomial? Remember, the degree is your highest exponent. So to me, my invisible exponent is a 1. The highest exponent on my variable is a 1, so it uh, is to the first degree. How many terms are in this um, polynomial? I see one, two different pieces separated by plus or minus signs. So this has two terms. So I'm going to call this a linear because it has a first degree and has two terms, so a linear binomial. All right, let's look at these next two. Uh, 7x to the third, it looks like the degree is three because of the third power. It looks like it just has one term, just one piece. There's no plus or minus sign separating or connecting anybody. And since it has a third degree and one term, I'm gonna call this a cubic monomial. All right, my last one has a whole bunch of things going on, a little bit different than the last few examples. This one's a little bit tricky because now we have multiple variables. It looks like we have x's and y's. And so the degree really is the highest degree of our variables combined. So in this case, my degree would be 5 because I have a 2 here and a 3 here. If I add those together, um, I would say that it's a fifth degree polynomial. It's my degrees added together in each term. My exponents added together in each term. So this degree would be five. How many terms are there? Well, there's one, two, three, four pieces separated by a plus or minus sign, so it has four terms. And so I would call this a fifth degree polynomial. It's to the fifth degree, has more than three terms, fifth degree polynomial. All right, our last example in this video, example number three, asks us to identify the coefficients for each term in the polynomial. On this polynomial, I see one, two, three, four different terms, so each term has its own coefficient. Uh, the coefficient, remember, is the number in front, so I'm gonna say that the coefficient of my first term is a four, my coefficient of my second term is a negative seven, the coefficient on that third term, it's not there, remember, though, it's an invisible one, and then my coefficient of the last term is negative eight. So remember, coefficients are the numbers in front of each term, and remember to keep their signs with them, either positive or negative. Now part B is a little bit different. It asks us what the leading coefficient is. Now be careful. Leading coefficient means if you were to put your polynomial in order, typically a standard form would go the highest exponent to the lowest, highest degree to the lowest. If you were to put it in order, standard form, what would be your leading coefficient, the number in the very, 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 very front? Now they try to trick us on this one, and some students say that the leading coefficient is three. However, if you look carefully, this polynomial is not in standard form. So what we have to do first is put it in standard form, put the highest degree first. So I would actually rewrite this with the five x to the fourth as my first term, then my negative eight x cubed as my second term then my 3x squared plus 7x minus 6. You notice that it's the highest exponent to the lowest? And now that I've written it in standard form, now what is my leading coefficient? Well, that's the number in the very, very, very front, and so my leading coefficient is actually the 5. So my leading coefficient of this polynomial is 5, not 3. So be careful, make sure that it's in order before you pick out the leading coefficient. There's coefficients and there's leading coefficients. Make sure that you read it carefully. All right, we're gonna do the next video here covering the next few examples. Let me know if you have any questions between now and then.